What's happening? Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I'm your host, Chris Broussard, and we got a great show for you once again today. Of course, we got Knocked Down Jay, and we got a special surprise for you in that where I show off my acting chops with Jason McIntyre. We're gonna have a lot of fun in there. And then, of course, we got a great interview with Joe Varden, who does a terrific job covering LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers for Cleveland.com. That's going, what a time to talk Cavs, right? So great interview there. But first, as always, we're going to do our top five. And this week, the reserves for the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference were named. And boy, there are some people who are upset that they did not make the all-star team. So I'm going to give you my top five all-star snub. So you can call it the all-snub team if you like, but here goes. At number five, Nikola Jokic, the six foot 10 inch, do everything center for the Denver Nuggets. 16 points a game, 10 rebounds a game, five assists a game, that's the team high. They've got a starting backcourt of two shooting guards. So Jokic is essentially their point guard, and he does a great job of running the offense, running the team. With Paul Millsap playing only 15 games, Jokic has the Nuggets fighting for a playoff spot in the rugged West. At number four, CP3, Chris Paul. He'd be higher on this list, and he'd definitely be an all-star if he hadn't missed 17 games. And I gotta admit, one of the greatest point guards ever, but I couldn't put him on the all-star team in the West missing 17 games, but he is playing lights out ball, surprising me and virtually everybody by fitting in so well in Houston. 19 points, nine assists, and 40% from three. I believe with Chris Paul and James Harden, the Rockets now have a legitimate chance to beat Golden State. I'm going to say 30%. That's legit nowadays. Nobody else has a, a double figures chance of beating Golden State. 30% the Rockets. Chris Paul at number four. At number three, Andre Drummond, Detroit Pistons center, leads their league in rebounding 15 boards a game, gives you 14 points, by far the highest PER on the team, and drops four assists a game. That's pretty good for a center, third on the team. Look, I love the professionalism of Al Horford. I love his intangibles. I love his defensive ability. But on an individual level, Andre Drummond is far more productive. Drummond should have been in the game. <laughs> At number two, Big Lou, or should I say Little Lou, or just Lou? Lou Williams having a terrific season. It's not an overstatement to say he is carrying the LA Clippers. Blake Griffin's missed 15 games. Danilo Gallinari and Patrick Beverly have only played 11 games each, and he has the Clippers in position to make the playoffs in the West. That is incredible. His best season of his career by far makes you wonder if a team had just given Lou the basketball in the years past, what he may have become. But anyway, 23 points a game over the last two months, 26 points a game. Some people think he should have made the all-star team just by on the basis of dropping 50 on Golden State in a victory for the Clippers a couple weeks ago. Hate to see Lou miss it, but yo, it's tough in the West. At number one, the biggest snub of this all-star season, Paul George in Oklahoma City. It's not outrageous. It's not unbelievable like his teammate Russell Westbrook said, but you can argue George should have been on the team. 42% shooting from three, 20 points a game, and the team is playing much better now. But here's the deal for Paul George. Look, bro, you in the West now. This is what you wanted. You wanted to leave the East and go to the West. There are some benefits to being in the Eastern Conference. You would have been an all-star. There's no doubt about it if you had stayed in the East. But now you're in the West. It's a lot more difficult. And it looks like you're going to stay in the West. If you stay in OKC or go to LA, and it's not going to get any easier to make all-star teams, Paul. What if LeBron goes West? What if Blake Griffin and Chris Paul stay healthy? When Kawhi Leonard gets back? I mean, what if when Devin Booker and Andrew Wiggins and Donovan Mitchell come of age? 
It's gonna be tough to make an all-star team, but this is what you wanted. You wanted to go west. Be careful what you wish for, man. This is how it is. So maybe you'll be a free agent. Look at some of those Eastern Conference teams if you wanna make more all-star games. So, hey, I hate to put it that way, Paul. I wouldn't have been mad if you had made the team. You're certainly playing great basketball, but this is your new reality. Welcome to the West. Those are your top all-star snubs of 2018. All right, here we go. Another segment of Knockdown Jay. One of my favorite parts of In the Zone because I get to knock down Try Jay. To. Try not. <laughs> Try to. What you got for me this week, man? I'm tired Chris, of pounding on you. Bring, listen, something, bring some strong stuff this Pretty time. incredible week in the NBA, right? I mean, so much Big happening. Week. But Big we're going to focus on your Ohio team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Listen, Proud. there is speculation about dude, should they fire Ty Lue? Should they trade Kevin Love? Uh, you know, is it what's the main problem in Cleveland? Is it the defense? Is yeah, it the eight oldest roster in the league? Chris, I'm going to surprise you here. I believe the number one problem with the Cleveland Cavaliers is LeBron James and the uncertainty of LeBron's future. I don't think that the Cavs can make a move without knowing LeBron's future. And everybody, everybody is in self-preservation mode. Isaiah Thomas, I got to get my shots. I got to get my contract. Kevin Love. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Stop. Kevin, stop right happen? there. Isaiah Thomas. Yes. I got to get my shots up. He's a free agent this oh, summer. Oh, yeah. What does that have to do with LeBron? He's worrying about himself because LeBron's worrying about himself. You LeBron... don't think he would be worrying about himself anyway? This is a dude that was fifth in the league in MVP yes. voting last year and makes $6 million a year. 29 points a game last year? And he's, what, 28 years old, something like that? He's, he he's doesn't. He, this is his last big deal. LeBron could be signed for the next 20 years in Cleveland. Isaiah Thomas still would be concerned mm, about don't... that contract. Come I mean, on. yes, he would, yes. But I don't he think he's get the, a max deal. I don't think he's the number one problem. I believe the number one problem in Cleveland is LeBron James and his uncertainty heading into the offseason. LeBron, there was uncertainty in 2010. LeBron's last year in Cleveland. Yeah. His first How did that end? They won 61 okay. games. How did it end in the playoffs? They lost to the Big Three, which was a great in Boston the team. Second round. But it was the it was a great okay. team they lost was to. Was there some sulking from LeBron? Was there some but in what's that, that got to do? You you said other players are messed up because LeBron yeah. well, we just is saw in the blast last year. Kevin Love but in a team my, meeting. My point Dude, is, you're begging out with the illness. What's and that got to do with the last year? Everybody okay. mentally is let, rattled. Let me Chris. make the point. 2010, they won 61 games. They lost to a great Boston team. If if one of the major reasons they lost that series was because LeBron really didn't play that well like his normal self. In the last few games. Do you think he was thinking now? Go, no. Let's go back to 2010. Do you think he was thinking about free agency? No. I don't. I think he was trying a to A month win. later, he organized, like, the banana boat team. Uh, well, oh, sorry, not banana boat. That's what you Wade do. That's okay. what every player does. You play out the season, and then you deal with free agency. Okay. 2014, he's in Miami. Same thing. Free agent, might leave. They go to the finals. They lose to a great San Antonio. Like, Kevin Durant last year or his last year in OKC. Everybody knows, same deal. He might leave, he's a free agent. He hasn't committed to us. They're up 3-1 on the Warriors. I mean, what do you, like- Boy, Chris, here it is. My point is players don't, like the last, this happens every year okay, with so guys. Chris, DeMarcus Cousins up. is in his last year in Oklahoma, in New Orleans. Does that mean it's messing up his teammates? Let's like, back what, up to my no statements. Sense. I say the number one problem in Cleveland is LeBron James. It sounds like you say there's no problems. Oh, everything's fine. No, what okay, I'm so saying tell me, is, what is the, the number one problem? It's not the, 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 their problems are not tied to LeBron being in his last so year. So tell me what the problem is. I just gave are. you several examples of how teams with a guy in there, with LeBron or another great player in his last year, have success. They okay. might not win the so title, tell but they're. What have are success. the problems in Cleveland? The problems right? in Cleveland, one, they're are the oldest team in the league. That's a problem. They can't guard, right? No. And it's not new. Last year, they couldn't guard. They were 22nd in the league defensively. After the All-Star break, they were 29th in the league yes, defensively. Very bad second half. So my point is, that wasn't related to, that had nothing to do with LeBron. His contract was set. set. You knew he was coming back. They still couldn't guard. They can't guard. They got a bunch of disjointed pieces. De Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, and Isaiah Thomas, are darn near the same player. I mean, Isaiah's obviously much shorter, and that's a problem because he can't guard anybody. 
but they're darn near the, the same player. Your J.R. Smith has vanished. Know, His I game is falling I feel, I apart. I like J.R. Smith. And Mine Shumpert ain't giving you anything. He's hurt. Yep. He's hurt. Um, you know, Kevin Love, God bless him, playing really good offensively when before Isaiah came back when his shots went down. But defensively, he couldn't. I think you could drop seven on him. That's I mean, all? like, yeah, that's, oh, all? that's all. That's all. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> point seven. Okay. No. But, but my, that's my point. Like, I get LeBron the last twelve games only twenty two points a game. Twenty percent played three great, during that stretch. But to say it's all because he's a free agent and the uncertainty, no way. Let's go to my man, unless you got okay. something else to say. No, no, I, you I mean, made your point. I mean, that was like, that, oh. that was one of the biggest beatdowns I've given you well, on this show. Mr. Let's go to Mr. Lynch. Mr. Andrew Lynch. Sorry, J-Mac. Chris no. takes round one. LeBron's status is a problem, but it's the age and it's the fact that it's the regular season. That's the biggest problem Ra- for the regular Cavaliers. Regular season. Well said, Mr. Thank Lynch. you, Mr. And he right. wrote on the FoxSports.com yeah. website so he knows exactly yes, what he's he talking does. about. Yes, he does. All right. What, this is a bring, perfect come segue. Come harder. Don't bring the weak this stuff. Is- <laughs> the weak stuff. This is a perfect segue to our second topic. So, as you said, the Cavs 3-9 and nine in their last 12. Yes. I think we should do a, a, a hypothetical game, Chris, where you are Dan Gilbert and I'm LeBron coming to you on how to fix the Cleveland Cavaliers. Do you want to play along? All right. Okay. So I'm going to knock on the door. Right, I'm Dan Gilbert. Hey, Dan, what's up? No, not on the phone. This is a face-to-face. Oh, Come this is a face-to-face. Face. Face. Come on. Hey. What you want? Up. <laughs> Dan, disrespectful to the greatest just, player in Cavs oh, history. Hey, LeBron, what's happening? Hey, how you good doing? to see you, Dan. Dan, good to see you. it's surprising. Yeah, yeah, I know. I haven't talked to you in a while. Hey, listen, that's you how bad usually, I want to win. You usually don't come up here and show that's me love. How bad I want to win. And you I smiling saw smiling too. Dan, right, I, cool. I saw what's going on come in the league. In. Have some Ye- wine. I got some wine. Oh, Your red favorite. wine. You yes. Love wine. Did you see Giannis? Great relationship with his owner in Milwaukee. Tried, could have tried to save Jason Kidd. You see Damian Lillard. Portland went right to the owner. Okay. Good relationship. So that's what I'm coming want. to you, Dan. Okay. I want to know. I got LeBron. I want the, the the contract is right here. Oh, okay. You don't have to opt. We'll get sign to the extension we'll, and stay. Is that what you want? We'll get to that in a second, Dan. Patience. All right. I get to it. Bring it on. You you know what I'm doing at the age of 33 is almost unforeseen. Go look at what Michael yep. Jordan did in his 15th year in the league. He's not putting up what I, I'm a okay. top five MVP candidate. Okay. And I think we're close. We can get out of the East, no problem. Now I, you think we can get out of yes, the East? Yes. Okay. My question is beat the Warriors. And I want every fiber that I've got to beat Golden State. And, and Dan, I got to say, I think you messed things up last summer when you traded Kyrie Irving. We, we, it was a little irrational. I messed and things I up. Want I messed you, things up. Yes. I want you and Kobe You Elvis. had nothing to do with it. I want you. I you didn't had- trade him. I didn't, yeah, trade, but, but I didn't trade Kyrie. He, part of the him. reason he wanted to go was he, he was tired of playing with you. Yeah, you're the leader. You should have sat us down in the room and said, Kyrie, let's work this out. We've got two top no, ten players in the, the NBA. You're the leader. You're the leader well, of that I'm the locker leader. room. Uh, you're the owner of the team. You're the leader you're of that locker room. You're worth a billion dollars. If I had texted you and said, LeBron, let's sit down and talk with Kyrie, what would you have done? I would have said, let's do it. Communication, Dan. Well, okay. You are a leader, right, that's man. your point. No, no, so I want to okay, ask you, Kyrie you got was, us in this mess. Ky- oh, no, Kyrie. now you jumping on me. Okay, all right, I'll settle you down. Know I'm, you know I got small man's complex, <laughs> so I can't handle that, all right? Kyrie Irving, because I traded him, that's why we're in the situation well, uh, we're in. Uh, Wasn't Tom- Kyrie Irving there last year when we got demolished? Demolished by Golden State in the finals. Okay. Kyrie Irving, I'd love to have Kyrie. He was great. He is great. He was the second best player on our team. No I question a about it. In the finals. Yes, you were. You were phenomenal. You're our best player. Ain't Thank no you question. For that. Jeez, Dan. I'm Unless just saying, Kyrie was great. He was, and we still were no match for them. So okay. don't tell. So, don't come in here jumping on me for trading Kyrie Irving. Okay. Well, you just gassed him up, and yet you traded him for damaged goods and Isaiah. Go look at him at practice. He can't defend a chair. Okay, and Jay Crowder, it's pretty clear he was a system guy in Boston. So did you come to complain or did you come because I, you have well, a possible I came because I want to talk about solutions. Okay, let's get okay. to solutions. I know there's talk about DeAndre Jordan. He could help us as a rim protector. I'm okay if you are interested and make that happen. The guy I want you to go get, go get me Paul George. He can defend on the wing. He is a good defender. He's shooting over 40% from three. He's the guy. I know DeMarcus Cousins is playing well. I gave him a shout-out on social media, you know, because he's looking good. 
Um, I don't think he defends at the level we're going to need. Paul George is the guy we need to help against the Warriors. He's the defender we need on the wing. Dan, can LeBron, you deliver? LeBron, when George? I came to you this past summer and said we could, we could get Paul George and Eric Bledsoe for Kyrie Irving if George will even stay. George will even stay beyond this year, at least one year. He'll give us at least next year to make it work if you sign on the dotted line. Like I said, the contract is here. The pin is here. You wouldn't do it, LeBron. I got to keep my options open, Dan. I don't know if you, who you guys gonna play are with that's better than Paul George. George. That's who I want right now. Can you get us Paul George? Will you stay? Let's not go back at the revisionist Will history. You, Let's okay. not look back. Will you stay? If I go get Paul George, and first of all, Oklahoma City saying they don't want to trade him. They looking, you know, they've been playing better lately. Oh, give They're going to try to make part a run. with the Nets pick. If, if I part with the Nets pick and it can get me Paul George, will you sign on the dotted line to stay here the long term, at least I, the I next I can't do that, but I'm telling years. you, it would Why be Why can't a, you do it? It would be the show of uh, solidarity between us that you are doing everything in your power to keep me here in Cleveland. Remember, what I came here and I delivered you a championship. You did. I brought you millions and millions of dollars to this city, to this you, arena, well, to your business, right. to this team. And those casinos got your again. name written all over. I will get, I will bring it to you another one if you get me Paul George. Mr. Lynn. Oh, no, we ain't oh. done. We ain't done. <laughs> I thought I would go oh, out with we ain't done. Okay, okay, we ain't okay. done. All right, Dan, I'll give you the LeBron. final LeBron. <laughs> I need why won't you sign? Uh, what? Dan, let, let, let me just let me let me look. We you a businessman just like I you. am you a ask business. Julia I'm Mogul. a business. Man. You are exactly right. I, Jay Z. See, Did you didn't think I was right. here. Yeah, we should hang sometimes. <laughs> See, LeBron, I've been wanting to hang. Yeah, that's I a fair know Jay Z. Okay. I can hang we'll with go you out guys. In Cleveland soon, you man. and Rich and Math to take me along, <laughs> brother. But anyway, LeBron, what am I to do if you leave? If you if if I trade that Brooklyn pick. For you and you, you say you're here, and I get Paul George, and then at the end of the season, you and let's say we don't beat the Warriors because they're a great team. We, well, let's we just have see a how chance, it plays out. but we might not. Let's see how it plays out. And you and Paul leave at the end of the year. What am I left with? I don't. Kevin know. Love and, and, I, and now I got to sign Isaiah. Let's focus on the immediacy, the now. Can we get that the pick Warriors is my in the insurance, LeBron? You can't look. You left me high and dry in 2010. I can't let yeah, that happen again. Yeah, that's when you got me 37-year-old Shaq, Antoine Jameson, and, and again, two guys that it didn't get me anywhere. It was enough to win us 66 no. games yeah, regular and then 61 season, games. Yeah, regular season, I need Paul George to beat the Warriors in the finals. Can you make it happen? And I need you to sign on the dotted okay. line. Well, you going to sign? It seems what we've got here is a little problem. LeBron, I okay. cannot. It would are be we better me. than? Are we better than the Warriors if you got Paul George? I believe we are, yes. Did you believe we were better than them last year? I think we were close. We beat them two Did years you ago. Believe we we beat them two years Did ago. Did you believe we were better than them last year? Well, Kevin Durant changed the game. We had Nobody anticipated that. Did you believe we were I better than them last year? I always believe we are the best team. <laughs> All right, the then. So you ain't player. saying nothing and, and right now. History. If I don't get you Paul George, do you believe we better? That's what I want, LeBron. Go out on your sword. If we lose to Golden State, we go out swinging. Yeah. I don't want to hear this moping. We don't have enough. We I didn't don't have say enough. that. That was, that was the media. Then talk to your that was boys. The media. Then talk to your boys. Talk to whoever went hey, to the media. That's not my job. ESPNCleveland.com, the athletic. Yeah, I know. I saw the that's article. That's job. Go talk to them. Go talk to them and say, look, we got enough. We got enough in this locker room. Kevin Love, you're a 2010 guy. Isaiah Thomas, you are an MVP candidate. I'm the best player in the world. D Wade, you still got something left. I'd like to see Kyle that kind Corbin, of fire. You one of the best shooters around. Yeah, you're 36, but go to them and say that. I'd you're like the leader. The, I'm not the and coach. And let's take that shot. That's the coach's job. Go get me, Paul George. Every time I turn on ESPN, Fox Sports, every time I watch these guys, they say you the coach. So what's no, up with I'm that? I'm not the coach. I am just a player, one of the greatest in NBA history, who brought this city a title. All I need from you is Paul George, and we'll do it again. Man, get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Lynch.
First of all, that's a fantastic Dan Gilbert. Yes, that, might be, my, that might be my favorite away. performance of 2018. I, I got some acting chops. I've been in a movie. I was in Hashtag Reality High. Hollywood, come <laughs> see me. Come see me. Can but, confirm. Uh, got to go with J-Mac on this one, though, because what? I think that LeBron is going to do what he can to convince Dan Gilbert to move that pick, either to make the team better this year or, if he does leave for San Antonio, to leave the Cavs high and dry. Again. Would you, would Ooh. you, if you were Dan, would you trade the Brooklyn pick? I would. Really? I would. And then, and then, then if LeBron leaves, I would look to sell the team. I think you being Chris, nice to him, but hey, yeah, I, by the way, I, I'm a LeBron fan. I love that. That was fun. I'm a LeBron fan. All too. right, let's close out on this. Um, your Houston Rockets, who you've been gassing up all season. Clint, uh, a gentleman by they the name coming. of Clint Capella, a 23-year-old center. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He's such an unknown entity. Well, um, for those of us who really watch the yeah, NBA and yeah. don't just look at the box scores. Clint Capella is uh, having a very nice we season. Know who he is. 14 and 10, only playing 26 minutes a night. His per 36 numbers are off the charts. Uh, he's good at running to the rim and dunking and blocking shots. He's got a decent Euro step. Okay. Uh, he actually had the audacity to say the Rockets are better than Golden State. Kevin Durant fired back. His job is not that hard. When your job is not that hard, you can't just come out here and say bleep like that. Kevin Durant fired back. Chris, I absolutely love what Kevin Durant said. Absolutely. What Clint Capella about? cannot run his mouth when he is winning two regular season games against the worst. Don't run your mouth. This is the, one of the greatest dynasties in NBA history. And you're going to run your mouth a better than them? Hold on. Clint Capella, don't let your mouth write checks that Chris Paul and James Harden got to cash because that's a problem. Clint Come Capella has May to, and June. First of all, I love not what Kevin Durant said, but what Clint Capella said. I want that type of belief. Okay. I you, mean, enough, like of the, enough of the rest of these teams that think they can't play with the Warriors. Enough of the rest of these teams who's had their heart taken from Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. I want people that believe. And if we've beaten that team two out of three times, why shouldn't I believe? Regular season. <laughs> Stay, hey, whatever. It's, it, that, that's what the games are about. Okay. Why shouldn't I believe? I got James Harden, who is probably the leading front runner for the He's MVP. Up there. He's, He's up right there up with there. Kevin Durant and Curry. I've got Chris Paul, who's one of the greatest point guards in NBA history and still playing very well. I've got a host of three-point shooters and role players. I'm doing my thing. Why shouldn't I believe? There, there is Should I just Chris. kiss the ring? No. Is but that what you, you don't want? need Should to say the oh, Rockets Durant, are better. Mr. You don't Durant, need to say we can't play with you. We can't no, beat you. But you, you don't need to I'll go there. there. You're, you're saying the Rockets guarantee. are better than Golden State. No human on planet Earth is saying that, Chris. He did. Did he Mike guarantee? Mike D'Antoni is probably in his office just sweating bullets. Why? Jeez. Now I got to deliver? No pressure now? Chris Paul can't get out of the second round, and you're telling me that the Rockets are better than Golden State? Did, this did, is stupid. Did this he, is dumb. Did he, it would have been wrong for him to guarantee victory over the Rockets in the playoffs. He's saying or over false the Warriors. statements. No, no, he's are not. Are the Rockets better than the Warriors? In his mind, yes. Are they better in your mind than anyone else in America? Tell us in the comments. We'll see in the playoffs. No, oh, no, I want an no, answer we'll now. No, we'll see. I, right now, I think, the, I think the Warriors are better. Okay. But that, that, that's it ain't all about I me. It ain't about what I think. It's about what Clint Capella. I want every player, player in that Rockets locker room thinking like you Clint Capella. You can think like that. You don't have to say it to the media. What's the difference? Oh, you like bulletin Let's board you know. material? You nah. want to give the Warriors bulletin board material? Because you know what? The Warriors, the, walk in the, 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 Warriors walk in the gymnasiums, buildings, arenas like they own everything. Like, yeah, y'all know you can't beat us. You know you can't beat us. I like Capella letting okay. them know, nah, we think we can beat you, all right? You're not getting the psychological mental edge on us. And, and another thing, Kevin Durant. Oh, no, don't go in on Now, nah, let me go. Don't look, go in on my I guy, like Durant. KD, all right? I was one of the few that didn't bash him when he went to Golden State. I did not bash him but at all. But KD I love does move. seem to have a problem with role players. Okay. Because his tweet, what was that, burner? Is that what it's called? His a burner, burner account. Burner yes, account yes, where he, he gave Westbrook love but said, I can't, you can't win with those guys. How you expect to win with those guys? Who are those guys? The role players. Why can't a role player say something? 
a role player where Clint Capella, okay, he's not as skilled as KD or James Harden or CP3 or whatever, but don't tell me he don't work hard. Hey, t- he's banging okay. with the big boys. Let me ask you this. And he's producing. You said 14 and 10. He's 14 and 10. His per PER yeah, he's, he's is always, second on the team. He's good. He's sixth in the league in PER. Huh. They could not win a championship or even get to the conference finals back. without Clint Cabela. Let's think back. He's got a right to speak his mind. Okay, let's think back. Especially to, Michael, to another team. Michael Jordan's Bulls ascending in like 88, 89. This would be the equivalent of Scotty Pippen. Remember migraine Scotty? Yeah. Running his mouth. Oh, Larry Bird, we're better than them. They, hey. You couldn't get by anybody in the East. That's what this is the equivalent of. A team ascending and close. They're close to maybe getting a game off the Warriors in the playoffs. <laughs> Running close his mouth to saying maybe you're getting better. A game? This is something Michael Jordan's head would have exploded and been like, dude, what is your Jordan problem? Jordan thought they were better than everybody. It's Michael Jordan. You're Clint Capella. Know your role, son. No. No. Oh my God! I want heart. Clint Capella you can showed have heart. heart. You don't you, need to run. Your you mouth. can go kiss your opponent's ring. In fact, you don't kiss it. <laughs> kiss my way. Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. Let's go to Lynch. Come on. Uh, I mean, geez, it's Clint Capella. The Rockets aren't better than the Warriors, but I want Clint Capella saying Thank he you. thinks the Rockets Thank are better you. than the Warriors, Thank and especially. You. It's one thing to think it. When you say it, that's when you really believe it. And that's Thank what I he like. Know what he, he knew what he was doing. He put it out in the public space. I can't wait for their next meeting. Warriors, what? No, no, you have a date I, on that? I can't wait oh, there's the no playoffs more in the playoffs. Uh, yeah. When they meet in the playoffs. I'm thinking broom. I might bring a sweep to that, uh, to that day we did the show. Since you, no, since I'm going to bring a broom since and you just all realistic, sweep the Rockets since out of here. you admit when, when you know somebody's gotten the Jeez, best of you here. Give me a break. <laughs> Uh, Not down, Jay. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> we want to welcome in Joe Varden, uh, beat writer for the Cavaliers for Cleveland.com. Does a tremendous job of covering all things Cavaliers and LeBron James. Joe, how you doing? Welcome to In the Zone. Oh, well, it's good to be here. Uh, I'm cold. Um, <laughs> you know, it's about 30 degrees and snowy. So, you know, other than that, all good. I know you're used to it. You're from the uh, Akron area. Uh, so... So I know you're you're used to that weather. That's right, but as you know, like when you when you're on the speed and you travel all around, um, you know we've been in mostly warm weather, and so my blood has thinned a little. So I got you know I got to toughen <laughs> up over these next couple weeks. I hear you. I hear you. Well, look, man, let's jump right into it. You've covered the Cavs for several years. You've seen this happen. Every year, if not you know, twice a year since LeBron's been back, there's been all types of drama, whether it was David Blatt, whether it was LeBron and Kevin Love, LeBron and Kyrie, uh, just the team playing poorly last season toward the end of the year over the second half. Does this year's struggles and or do this year's struggles and all this drama going on right now, is this any different? And if so, how? Yeah, I mean, I think it's different um, because the actors are different, one. And then, two, it's not just LeBron sort of causing the waves um, anymore. I mean, you know, everybody under the sun has has discussed this uh, infamous team meeting that they had the other day where uh, everyone kind of went at everyone. And LeBron didn't start it. Um, You know, it it was some other guys going at Kevin for, for having missed uh, most of a game and a practice. Um, it was actually two of the new guys, I, I, Isaiah Thomas and Dwayne Wade. And then it mushroomed immediately into like a, a, a team-wide thing where kind of everybody was calling out everybody um, from the general manager, Kobe, new, new general manager, Kobe Altman, who was there, you know, to LeBron and, and on down. So um, that's one way th- this is different. And then, you know, the other way, um, is it just um, they're just in these games, especially in these games against good teams, they're just not they're not competitive. Um, you know, the Cavs went through two bad months last year, but sort of the losing was was interrupted at times by the Cavs playing well against good teams. Um, you know, there, there were a couple exceptions. You know, the Spurs blew them up pretty pretty bad last year, but. You know, like they'd, they'd play Boston and the Cavs beat them by 25 or something like that in the middle of a, of a rough stretch. And now when they play these good teams, they get blown out. Um, they, they're 0 and 6 in their last six national TV games and they've lost by a combined 101 points. So 
you know, there's, there's a lot going on, which is, as you mentioned, normal for this team, but, but some of it does indeed feel different. So you mentioned about the team meeting Kobe Altman being involved as far as going back and forth. Were players calling him out? Yeah. <laughs> really? It was, it was a raw – oh, yeah, it was It was a raw personal, um, you know, experience for, for everybody. Um, you know, and, and it was just – like that, that, that's probably the biggest um, – I don't know if misnomer is the right way to say it. Uh, it the, the meeting, the 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 meeting didn't start as a meeting. The meet it, it began with, you know, like I said a, a player or two coming at Kevin, um, and before Kevin could almost even really understand what was going on, like everybody had kind of joined joined had kind of come together, um, and Kevin sort of return serve and quickly it, it devolved into, um, you know, several, several players and organization personnel taking shots and giving them. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it's to the point where like Kevin, uh, he, he's, he's not even, he, he wasn't that upset afterwards because he didn't, he didn't feel like it was just a, a case where he was being ganged up on. It was, um, <laughs> they ganged up on him to start and then everybody else took the took grief as well. So it was, you know, it, it was, it was intense certainly. Um, and I was just, you know, I've been kind of saying the danger with these things, Chris, is you do them and you, you, you air your grievances and you get personal. Um, and then it's worse if we find out about it when then you go out and don't do anything differently on the court. Um, they looked as disinterested and lackadaisical and unable to defend as they had before they all yelled at each other. And so that's when these things um, really start to fester and, 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 and grow roots. You've heard people say, why go at Kevin Love for missing one game when Derrick Rose walked away from the team to contemplate retirement and they, nobody went at him? You know, why did they jump on love? That that seems a little odd to me just for missing one game. Well, I think there's a couple there's a couple of things to discuss here. Um, you know, because I've heard the, the Derrick Rose point. And um I think we can start with Kevin. One, he he is a target. Um, you know, I remember LeBron just savaging him on Twitter with the uh, fit out, yeah. fit in tweet from from a couple of years ago um and lebron has uh lebron has called him out over the years um for not demanding the ball for 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 being upset with his role and any number of things and sometimes it was warranted and sometimes it wasn't and so kevin on the one hand like just occasionally is a target um the derrick rose thing it is interesting um Publicly, players said the right thing. If you really think about it, publicly, they've only said, like, no one has, has killed Kevin publicly either yeah. uh, over this. Uh, and, and even Isaiah and, and Dwayne, which I just thought was hilarious, um, both <laughs> congratulated him uh, on, Twitter, on Twitter for making the All-Star game. Like, we all don't know what was, what was really going on. Yeah. Um, you know, privately, privately, the players were were certainly put off by, by Derek um, and, and are, you know, surprised at, at some level that he has, he has been able to return and, and have a place in the rotation um, when he walked away. I mean, so, so yes, like Kevin can draw that parallel and Kevin, can, Kevin can say, you know, Kevin can be um, upset about that part of it, but, but, you know, don't, the the players also noticed when Derek left and they have also noticed that he's back playing now um, with virtually no repercussions. So, you know, that, that was not lost on them either. I was stunned when the report came out that Isaiah Thomas was the one that kind of led the charge against Kevin Love just because he's so new and has only played, what, eight or nine games, eight games, I think. Um, how yeah. is he fitting in? to the locker room as far as, you know, he's made some comments. I mean, after his first or second game, he said the way they're playing is unacceptable. He's talked about they don't practice enough. 
Um, again, calling out love. Like, how is he fitting in in the locker room? It seems like he has a – he's like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, um, especially the, the practice thing, which, r- again, <laughs> rubs some guys the wrong way because here's Isaiah – and he won't let this practice thing go. We don't practice. We don't practice. And the irony to some of the guys in the locker room was, well, wait a minute. You're talking about how we don't practice the day after games. But you, Isaiah, are not allowed to play on back-to-back days. <laughs> so what? <laughs> how does this work? Like, what were you supposed to do on these days right. that we're not practicing if you're not allowed to do the back-to-backs? Um, I- Isaiah was a great fit here. Uh, after the trade, he, um, he he's more social than Kyrie. Um, I think he's easier to get along with in general. Um, you uh, you know, he was kind of hanging out off the court with LeBron a little and Dwayne um, and just kind of seen and, and really liked it here. And, and, you know, a source suggests to me that he still does. Um, but, but he really did like it here. He liked every like the vibe and everything. And now he is rubbing guys the wrong way, um, and he, he has. And it, and there's a couple things to it. I mean, he's trying to play his way back to where he used to be, and we don't know if that's going to happen or not. But in the meantime, he's really frustrated because it's not happening or it hasn't been happening. And the Cavs are playing him as though he's a two-time All-Star who scores 30 a game. So he gets all these looks in the offense. And he's not making the shots. And then as a result, because they're so poor defensively, that, that just leads to these to all, to all these issues. And Isaiah is kind of looking for avenues to vent. So practice is a problem. Um, you know, team defense is a problem. You know, yeah. we cared about it much more in Boston, those kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, the comments uh, cause issues. He's frustrated. And at the same time, you know, the players understand, his teammates understand who he is and what he's there for. So on the one hand, they're okay with him getting these shots, and they understand that right now they're not falling. But then they're also frustrated because they know that playing this way is what has disrupted a lot of the rhythm. Um, you know, LeBron's having a terrible month. Kevin's having a bad month. Um, his shots are way down. Uh, the bench isn't what it used to be. Um, just a lot of pieces moving in and out. Uh, Corver's not the same. And, like, that's not all just Isaiah's fault. It isn't. But trying to re to, um, to integrate him into the flow of things has caused a, a major disruption for in a number of ways. And I think that has a lot to do with the frustration. And you've seen, of course, the reports. I know you're on top of it of, of them potentially trading for George Hill. If they get this deal done, so what would his role be starting at the two next to Isaiah, coming off the bench, starting at the point? Like, what do you see? How do you see him fitting in? Well, Chris, there's a couple things to that. Um, he, yeah, he, he, he can be a combo guard. Uh, you know, sources think he can play alongside Isaiah, um, which would mean J.R. Smith goes to the bench. He's had a, a, a bad year. Um, and so, so maybe that, that works out. Um, you could, but this, I mean, this takes some guts that so far this organization hasn't been willing to, to, to show, um, you could start him, uh, and, and, and bring Isaiah off the bench. Um, (laughs) that would cause, (laughs) yeah, that would, I don't think that's a bad basketball idea, but man, can you imagine how you think Isaiah, I mean, it's a contract year, all that. Yeah. It it, it doesn't seem like that's what they want to do. Um, but, but even with George Hill, Chris, I mean, he's 31. He, yes, he's averaging 10 points and he's shooting nearly 45% from three. So, you know, that, that, that's good. But he, he plays for a bad team, uh, so somebody has to score. And they don't do a lot of scoring as it is. Um, and his defensive rating, he I looked this up, and, um, he is the ninth worst defender in the NBA this year among players who've played at least 20 games. Um, he had a toe injury last year that, that forced him out of the final three games of the conference semifinals and sources are wondering like how, if that ever completely healed. Um, and here's the Cavs who are just 
ridiculously bad on defense, and they're going to the one team um, who's worse <laughs> defensively <laughs> to, to fix it. And 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 the only the Cavs only have one player who's rated worse defensively than George Hill, and that's that's Isaiah. Um, so it's it's interesting, but they they think <laughs> that you know they're they're kind of hoping that that Hill's bad defense is a product of his team and that he would fit in better here. Uh, so what other, do you see any other moves on the horizon or potential moves that they could make before the trade deadline? Well, I mean, I, I think there's a difference between could make and, and will make um, that they, they are pursuing Deandre Jordan. There's, there's no question about that. And they would still have the resources to get him after this George Hill trade, if they wanted, um, you know, I, again, I mean, you said it already uh, just about sort of the politics involved with what they do with Isaiah. Um, you know, Kemba Walker is is available. Um, you know, Michael Jordan kind of threw a little bit of water on that, but, but I think he still could be had. You know, frankly, yeah. with what else the Cavs have, um, Kemba would probably be a better fit here. Um, you know, I, I don't know that, like, ownership wants to move off of Isaiah and you know they may want to keep him here long term and and you know to be fair to him he has only had eight games and he is scoring the ball better um he just you know he needs more time so so maybe he he rounds into form um but Kemba's out there um if they get George Hill I don't know that they also look at another wing like a Baysmore or somebody like that um, but then you have to look at at uh, someone to help defensively uh, underneath, and that that would be DeAndre if they could. But I mean, the Clippers, you know, they lost to the Celtics on on Wednesday. They're, they're a game under 500. Like they're they're trying to figure out if they want to move these guys or not. Um, so that you know, that's the one one of the ones to keep your eye on there. There's really no way they're giving up that number one pick, or that I'm sorry, that Brooklyn pick. Is that? pretty much correct well i wouldn't say no way but but the kind of the way it's always been is is that pick is available for premium talent and um if you think about the premium players well their their teams have all gotten it together you know the thunder are great now you know so there's no mm-hmm. way paul george is available um the the pelicans are rolling uh, so it, it certainly um, doesn't appear that DeMarcus is going to be available, and, and you know Anthony Davis is out of the question. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know that, that that marquee like player is is out there. And then it's it's almost a catch twenty two because if 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 the Cavs are so bad that they are not, I mean, this sounds silly in a way because. You, you, you understand, but <laughs> if they're so bad that they can't make the finals or they can't get to the Eastern Conference finals, then you should hold on to that pick anyway because um, you're going to need to rebuild or replenish. Um, and then otherwise, you would hold on to it unless there is a an, an impact player that gives you a chance against the Warriors. And I don't know that that, that player is available via trade. So you look at your other first-round pick um, – you know, you try to weigh some of the other assets you have. You look at moving Jay Crowder. Um, that could maybe net you something better in return, and you um, you, you try to, to improve the team that way. So, bottom line, do you, I mean, a lot of people just still are banking on LeBron being able to get them out of the East. Do you see these issues and these struggles that they're having – as something that they'll overcome just like they have the past three years and as far as getting to the finals? Well, Chris, uh, there's, we learned last year that we really we should stop um, reacting too strongly when they go through these things because they were so bad, and then they got to the playoffs and LeBron just carried them and they, everybody was great, and they, you know, they won their first 10 and they got back to the finals and it was fine. Um, the difference now is when you watch this team as currently constructed with the starting lineup as currently constructed, they are incapable of defending. They, they cannot get it. They cannot get enough stops to win these games. Um, and un- unless Isaiah becomes the player that he was and they can be efficient enough offensively to outscore 
most of these teams. It, it is hard, again, as currently constructed, to see them to, to see the same kind of turnaround because they're just at such a disadvantage on defense. Um, but there's so many that there are enough little things that they can change that to, to get this right and get the best player in the world in position to um, push this team, you know, into the conference finals and, 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 and back into the finals. So you don't, you don't wave the, the white flag. Um, you don't write this team off, but it, it is, it is harder to see this, right now without some kind of change where where is lebron at mentally right now um I, I like you said he hasn't had a good month there's some people that think you know he's kind of sulking sending a message to management hey get us some help at the trade deadline that's why he's not playing well um what do you think's going on with lebron he, he's kind of bewildered um because uh, I mean, th- there aren't a lot of answers um, at, at, at the moment. Um, he's never, certainly since, uh, at least since his rookie year, his teams have never been beaten like this consistently in any stretch of time where, you know, it's a night in, night out over a two, two or three week stretch where they just get their heads handed to him. And he doesn't really know what he can do to fix it. He, he knows his numbers are down. Um, and he's just, I mean, he, he's not been a factor in fourth quarters. Um, and he's just, you know, he, I don't believe he's quit. I don't believe that he's, um, even given up necessarily, but he, you know, bewilderment and then some, and this would be the worst thing, but it's true. Some level of resignation, um, that, that this is going to be, a you know, that, that there are some challenges that maybe they can't overcome. Um, and so that's yeah. what you want to watch watch for is that is, is that does that really creep into him and, and drag him down for the rest of the year? Well, that's where I wonder if because I mean when we talk about the Cavs on a national level and and people talk about you know what can they do to fix themselves they'll be okay is it panic time whatever I feel like people including myself we're referring to just getting out of the East. And we're not even like I don't think anybody thinks they're gonna beat the Warriors. It's almost like just winning the East would be success for this team. Um, but I'm starting to wonder if they believe they can't beat the Warriors, if they are really unmotivated to get back to the finals and get swept or beat in five or whatever it might be, and that could affect them as far as getting out of the East. Do you think there's any Anything there as far as, you know, that could be a, be the case with this team, that they're just, they just don't, not that they don't want to get to the finals, but subconsciously believing they really don't have a shot against Golden State, they may just not be able to get themselves up enough to even, you know, come out of this rut and even get to the finals. That is a, a great point, a very prescient observation, um, and it's, it's correct. It, it, it is correct. I think if I walked in there today at practice and I said, um, do you, do you really think, uh, do you think you can beat the Warriors? And if you don't, um, is that a, is that sort of a, a, uh, is that depressing you for your, for, for how you're approaching the rest of the season? LeBron or the rest of the players would say, we can't be thinking about Golden State right now. Um, we got to fix ourselves. Yeah. But the truth is, you know, those two Golden State games that they played, the scores were close. Um, and yet, after the second one, when when I and, and, you know, my two colleagues on the beat, when we wrote that players were really bummed out and not sure that this could be fixed, and that, Chris, was the actual root of it. That it's like, we're not good enough to beat the Warriors, and so what's the point? Um, that, that was, that was a predominant thing there, uh, feeling, you know, in those conversations. And, and I I do think that that's weighing on them to a degree. So my thing I've said on the, on, you know, nationally, I get that, but I don't think anybody's going to kill them for losing to the Warriors, but they will, particularly LeBron, they will get killed if they lose to Kyrie. 
<laughs> and the Celtics. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's worse than losing to the Warriors. So it, at the very least, get motivated to beat Boston and win the East. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that's right. Because <laughs> do they feel that? I mean, is are they conscious that look, we we cannot let Kyrie, you know, beat us and win the East. I I I think so. I I I do think so. I mean, I think you know, LeBron is is upset very much so that they traded Kyrie to Boston specifically um, and that this has worked out so well for the Celtics, but he also knows that Kyrie wanted out because of him. And so whatever LeBron tries to do to, mm-hmm. to, to distance himself from the front office, the fact remains like it's on him to make sure Kyrie doesn't beat him. Um, and you can see that on opening night. Uh, the last time the two teams played, the Cavs were on the second night of a back-to-back. Um, they were starting a long road trip. They had just come off a long road trip. Um, so you could you could see that that one wasn't going to be the night. Um, the, the two teams play again on February 10th or 11th, I think 11th on a Sunday. Um, and, and that is the one that you really, if the Cavs can figure out any of these other issues, that you really want to see what they have because um you know they'll it'll be the last time they play each other i think and um you know lebron will want to get into that mode where he makes clear that that he's not ready to give up the you know his his run in the east i mean he's been to seven straight finals um you know i think the russell's record was 10 or something like that like that's not like he could reach that, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's in within reach. And, you know, yeah. I, I'm sure LeBron just doesn't want that to just go by the wayside either. There is this perception, as you know, that LeBron is the coach, the GM, everything but the owner of the team. Um, how, you know, what is really the state of LeBron and the Cavs? I mean, can Ty Lu really coach the team or is LeBron kind of pulling the strings in the front office as well? Like, wh- what's the real situation there? Yeah, I mean, first of all, LeBron um, has less um, communication with the, the top of the front office, as in, like, you know, general the general manager spot that, than he has in a while. I think at, at some level, the, the perception that LeBron was the GM was, was unfair to him and, and to David Griffin. Um, there were lots of things that David did, um, you know, that, that were his ideas, certainly. And then he would keep LeBron in the loop um, and, and, and ask for his opinion. But but it was it was Griff driven. Um, now, LeBron, you know, contends that that he doesn't have the same interaction. Um, I don't know if that has changed over the last couple of days now that that Kobe is getting active, chasing some of these guys. Um, but, but certainly that, that dynamic has changed. Um, and, and like, for instance, when they traded Kyrie to Boston, they didn't, they didn't talk to LeBron about, um, you know, is this a good idea? Um, yeah. they, there was a discussion about should, should we trade Kyrie at all? Um, but, but not about to Boston. And then, you know, as far as the coaching thing goes, it's a tough job and it's not just because of LeBron. It is because of LeBron, but not just because of him. You know, this is the oldest team in the league. You've got Kevin Love, you got Dwayne Wade, Kyle Korver, um, you know, Isaiah's here now. I mean, these are players who are extremely established, who've been doing things a certain way their entire careers. And so now you come here and um, it's, it's hard to just say, okay, this is the way it's going to be. Like Ty has to be much more of a manager of his, of the personalities on his team and take what he's got on his team and try to fit it into what he wants to do instead of saying, this is what I want to do, and you guys have to fit yourselves into it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like it is hard in, in Ty's case, but it's not just because of LeBron. How you know there's been speculation about his job security. How is his job security right now with the Cavs? It, so the the thing about Ty is he's not just their coach. Um, he he is their front office figure who has by far the most respect and most cachet in the league. Um, he's their closer on free agents. 
um, in, in some, in many ways, he's their recruiter. Um, you know, when you look at the guys, at the guys in the front office, I believe, I don't believe any of them, um, is, is as old as Ty, uh, I don't think. And, and certainly none of them have the overall NBA experience that Ty does, like literally none of them. Um, so I, there's just, there would be, um, there's already a void. There would be an incredible void if they were to move on from him. Um, but as you and I know this, you know, Dan, uh, Dan can be a reactionary owner at times. And he also values defense. Um, there's been a lot to react to lately and they don't defend. So it, it's fair to say what's going on with him. Um, but I don't, I just don't, I, I don't get the sense that that's where things are headed on that front right now. So what's your feel? This is obviously the elephant in the room. What's your feeling on what LeBron does this summer? Do you think he's a Cavalier next year, or you think he's elsewhere? My, my answer always was um, that it was more likely than not that he stays. Um, and now, um, I guess, because things have been so ugly for so many weeks, I, I would say – you know, maybe it's more likely than it isn't that he doesn't come back, but it's not, it's, you know, that that is a product of where things are right now. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody close to him the other day and, and their point was, well, I mean, where is he going to go? And this is someone close yeah. to LeBron. Um, so, so it's still, it's not cut and dry. It's not as easy as, oh, he's going to LA or, 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 oh, he's staying. There, there are many factors. Um, you know, I, I, I would, suggest that the Cavs do something um, to turn this around, make some moves, um, show him that they are still capable of, you know, fielding a team that, that can be as competitive as, as he wants them to be, um, To you know, and then it makes it easier for him to do all the things that would be easy for his legacy and easy for his family, um, you know, and that's probably to stay in Cleveland. But, you know, it's it's gone – uh, ever since you thought, like, ever since <laughs> um, he said in September that I still intend to retire uh, as a Cavalier, you know, more things than not have gone against that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's fair to question. <laughs> well, Joe, man, excellent information, man. Great job. And uh, I know you got to head out to the Cavs practice today for probably more drama, I guess, right? So, <laughs> That's it. Yeah, never, never stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, man, for joining in the zone. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you soon down the line. Look forward to it, Chris. Thanks. All right, man. Thanks. Yep. Bye.